So hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our fifth and final session of Art and Politics in our year-long series on Understanding Systemic Racism, which is sponsored by the Ambedkar Initiative and hosted by the Institute for Comparative Literature and Society. As you know, we commemorate the anti-caste legacy of B.R. Ambedkar and reflect on his continued relevance for discussions about social justice, affirmative action, and democratic thinking in global frame. My thanks to our co-sponsors, the Barnard Provost's Office, the Deans of Humanities and Social Science, and the EVP at Columbia, uh, institutes such as CSER, CGT, ERAS, IRCPL, the South Asia Institute, as well as the MISAS Department, the Columbia University Libraries, and Columbia University Press. Today, it's a great pleasure and honor to host a rare reading by and discussion with the celebrated Kannada writer, Devanura Mahadeva. He will be in conversation with literary historian and cultural critic, Prithvi Dattachandra Chandra Shobhi. Devanura Mahadeva is a giant in the world of Kannada literature, best known perhaps for the literary landmark, Kusuma Bale, which was published in 1988 and which is translated into English, as well as Dhyavanuru, 1973, the novella Odalala, which was published in 1981, each of which focused on Dalit life and interiority, as well as a collection of critical essays, Yerge Bidda Akshara, which was published in 2012. Mahadeva is also the keeper of our social conscience, seeking to write a world dangerously askew and lacking moral compass. He's the recipient of many awards, including the Sahitya Academy Award, the Padma Shri, the Alama, and the Bodhisattva Awards, a DLIT from the University of Mysore, and the Nadoja uh, Award from the Kannada University in Hampi. Mahadeva was also among the first to return the Sahitya Academy Award and the Padma Shri in 2015 to protest the ongoing assault on critical thought and reason. As many of you know, Karnataka has seen a relentless attack on public intellectuals. The killings of M.M. Kalburgi and Gauri Lankesh are well known, but there is indeed a much broader effort underway to erase the living memory and the insistent lives of insurgent critique and of long traditions of heterodoxy. And it is this tradition which is the lifeblood of Mahadeva's craft. Prithvi Datta Chandra Shobhi, friend and colleague, teaches at Kriya. He is himself an important literary historian and translator, and one of the most innovative and engaged of our time. I think his rereading and translation of the Vachana tradition is unparalleled for what it shows us about the luminosity and the sheer insurgence of the Vachana as form but also because Prithvi is fundamentally rewriting the ways in which we have apprehended the Vachana tradition in Toto. And I think many of you will recall his marvelous introduction to D.R. Nagaraja's celebrated work, The Flaming Feet, uh, which was put together and republished with a collection of other essays after Nagaraja had passed. Prithvi has written about Mahadeva and argued for the significance of folk literary epics as well as other non-elite literary traditions of Kannada, such as the Vachanas and Tattvapadas, as the aesthetic forms and genres through which Mahadeva imagines new political possibilities. In the process, also challenging the social realist focus of much modern Dalit literature. Others have noted that Mahadeva stretches the standard Kannada syntax to an extreme as he jumps from prose to poetry, that his style comprises condensed description, chant-like rhythms, and long evocative sentences densely packed with phrases. So in many ways, he is taking us back to traditions of song, performance, recitation, uh, with their long histories uh, in the popular tradition. Today, uh, we are going to start with Mahadeva's readings. We've, uh, so Prithvi, together with Mahadeva, have picked four short excerpts that uh, Devnura Mahadeva will read. And uh, Prithvi, I think, will project the translations, the English translations, as Mahadeva reads. And then Prithvi and Mahadeva will be in conversation. We are also going to have a short uh, 
musical performance uh, in, in the midst of this uh, by the theater director Janni, who uh, was the first to take Kusama Bale from uh, novel onto the stage. And then I've asked if Prithvi himself could speak a little bit about the nature of Mahadeva's literary and political project, about Dalit and Bandaya rebellion literature and the literary school that, uh, that created, and then the self-perceptions and the self-critique of the Dalit movement itself. Uh, so this is an extraordinary event uh, for us. Uh, it's been a very long time, I think, uh, since we've had a chance to hear Devanura Mahadeva's recite and uh, be with us and speak with us about his literature and writing. And so I really want to mark our final event today by thanking Devanura Mahadeva. It's just a great, great honor to have him here today and Prithvi and Jamni as well. Thank you all for joining us. And uh, as usual, they will speak and take the time that they need. And I'm happy to collect questions in chat and Q&A uh, from the audience uh, once they're done. Thanks again for being with us. Thank you, Anu. Uh, delighted to be here. Uh, thanks to uh, the organizers, uh, SELS and uh, Sarah and, and others who have put together this event. So we'll start with the reading. I just want to add one additional uh, word to what uh, Anu already said by way of introduction to Devnur Mahadeva. I usually prefer to work on dead authors because they don't trouble us too much. Uh, although we think it's safer to work on dead authors, whether it's the Vachana poets from 12th century or other Shaiva uh, writers on whom I usually work on, uh, it's become quite risky these days. Uh, but having said that, um, I must begin with a confession that Devnur Madeva is perhaps one of the two contemporary writers who have compelled me, who have tempted me to read them closely and, and, and write on them. Um, and again, just building on uh, what uh, Manu, uh, what, what Anu said, uh, I see him perhaps as the only successful writer of the past 50 years who has had, who has succeeded in thinking about politics through aesthetics, uh, particularly in, uh, in the Canada context. Uh, if you look at his literary experiments. Uh, so uh, having, with that brief introduction, uh, let me turn to uh, Devanur Mahadeva and invite him to read the two uh, prose passages. And those prose passages we wanted to begin with, uh, partly because his writing style is, is that of uh, you know, parables and, and they're uh, quite uh, uh, engaging from that perspective. So the first one, the first one is called Nanna Devaru and I'll project the text. So, Namaskara. Another day, Prasid Dawara Patti Devendra, Nanna Devaru yesterday, Lake Kara, Chinta Kara, Anishya Kara, Nanna Patti Devendra. Aksmat, Nanna no kira dure, yau dekhu nirli anta. Nanu bariya dekha dina andaz kati. Adre Patti Kevaru, Nanna ke Devaru illa ante no yena, Nanna na kira dey illa. Agagi. Nano Andajis Kandita, Deuru, Nanogene Ulit Nana Deuru, Nanogay Ulit Ulit Kavi, Galea Kavi Siddalingaya, woman and get. Here the Katil Mane Manchama, Yemba Gramma Devatia, Vajinda, Nana Deuru, Vadamurit Unsara, Undu Gramma da Generala Seri, Tama Devate Gurikatalo, Aramstre. We cut the Chavari Mateka Guribanana. Bobbana may mele a devote, Mancha Mahava is Pundu Nilinan Makla into a Brahman. A Baraka Jana, Tamakelsa, Nisi Kaka Bukta in Murta Ruga, a devote, a general in the room, Matu Katana. Yenrea Matagri, a devote Kelta. In one the goody manakas tidy tidy, a general. Oh, Nanagene, Gurimanekatista, 
ಹಾಗಾದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆಲ್ಲ ಮನೆ ಉಂಟ ನನ್ನ ಮಕ್ಕಳ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ನನಗಿಲ್ಲ ತಾಯಿ ಅಲ್ಲ ಬಾಯ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಹಾಗಾದ್ರೆ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಮನೆ ಆಗುವವರಿಗೆ ನನಗೂ ಮನೆ ಬೇಡ ಹೀಗಿಂದ ಮಂಚಮ್ಮ ದೇವಿ ಆವತ್ತಿನಿಂದ ಮನೆ ಮಂಚಮ್ಮ ಅಂತ ಆಯ್ತಾರೆ ಹೆಸರು ಪಡೀತ ಚಾವಣಿ ಇಲ್ಲದ ಗುಡಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ತಾಯಿ ಮನೆ ಮಂಚಮ್ಮ ಇಂದು ಪೂಜಿತಳಾಗ್ತಿದ್ದಾಳೆ ಸುಮಾರು ದೇವಸ್ಥಾನಗಳು ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದ ಉದ್ದಗಳಿಗೂ ಕಾಣ್ತವೆ ಈ ರೀತಿಯಾಗಿ ಚಾವಣಿ ಇಲ್ಲದ ಗುಡಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಕಾರುಣ್ಯ ಸಮತೆಯ ಉದ್ದನನ್ನ ಇಟ್ಟರೆ ಅದೇ ನನ್ನ ದೇವರಾಗುತ್ತೆ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ಟಚಬಿಲಿಟಿ ವಿತ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸಿಸಮ್ ಯೂಸಸ್ ಮೆಟಫರ್ ದ ಮೆಟಫರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೆಡ್ಡ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೋಕಲ್ ಟು ಮೈಸೋರ್ ಅಸ್ ಬೈ ವೇ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಪೇರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಟೂ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಆಫ್ರಿಕಾದಲ್ಲಿ ವರ್ಣ ಭೇದದ ವರ್ಣ ಭೇದವು ಹಸಿಯಾದ ಗಾಯ ಇತ್ತೀಚಿನ ರೀಸೆಂಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿಂದ ತೊಟ್ಟು ಕೂತಿರುವ ರಕ್ತ ನಮಗೆ ಕಾಣಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ವರ್ಣ ಭೇದದ ತಾರತಮ್ಯ ಕಾನೂನುಗಳನ್ನು ಪ್ರತಿಭಟಿಸಿದ್ದಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾವಿರಾರು ಜನ ಕರಿಯರ ಹತ್ಯೆ ಆಯಿತು ಹತ್ತಾರು ಸಾವಿರ ಜನರು ಜೈಲಲ್ಲಿ ಕೊಳೆಯುವಂತಾಯಿತು ಪ್ರತಿಭಟನೆ ತೀವ್ರಗೊಂಡಾಗ ಒಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಹತ್ತಾರು ಜನ ಸೇರುವುದು ಕೂಡ ಅಪರಾಧ ಎನ್ನುವ ಮಟ್ಟಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋಯಿತು ಒಟ್ಟಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಕಾನೂನೇ ಅಪರಾಧಿಯಾದಾಗ ಏನೆಲ್ಲ ಅವಾಂತರ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ಆಯಿತು ಈ ಭೀಕರತೆಯನ್ನು ನೆನೆಸಿಕೊಂಡಾಗಲೆಲ್ಲ ನನಗೆ ಪುರಾತನ ಭಾರತದಲ್ಲಿ ಚಾತುರ್ವರ್ಣ ಜಾತಿ ಪದ್ಧತಿಯಿಂದ ಒಂದು ಜನಸಮುದಾಯವನ್ನು ಆಚೆ ನುಗ್ಗಿ ಎಸೆದು ಅಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯತೆಗೆ ಒಪ್ಪಿಸಲು ಒಗ್ಗಿಸಲು ನಡೆದಿರಬಹುದಾದ ಬಲತ್ಕಾರ ಕ್ರೌರ್ಯ ಹಿಂಸೆ ಹತ್ಯೆಗಳೇ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಆಫ್ರಿಕಾದಲ್ಲಿ ವರ್ತಮಾನದಲ್ಲಿ ವರ್ಣ ಭೇದದ ರೂಪದಲ್ಲಿ ಪುನರಾವರ್ತನೆ ಪುನರಾವರ್ತನೆ ಆದಂತೆ ಕಾಣುತ್ತೆ ಆನೆ ಹಿಡಿಯುವ ಕೆಡ್ಡ ನಿಮಗೆ ತಿಳಿದಿರಬಹುದು ಕಾಡಲ್ಲಿ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಹಳ್ಳ ಮಾಡಿ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಹಳ್ಳ ಮಾಡಿ ಕಡ್ಡಿ ಸೊಪ್ಪು ಸೊದೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹಳ್ಳದ ಮೇಲ್ಭಾಗವನ್ನು ಚಾವಣಿಯಂತೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಹಳ್ಳ ಕಾಣುವಂತೆ ಮಾಡುತ್ತಾರೆ ನಂತರ ಗದ್ದಲ ಮಾಡಿ ಆ ಹಳ್ಳದತ್ತ ಆನೆ ಓಡಾಡುವಂತೆ ಮಾಡುತ್ತಾರೆ ಹಳ್ಳದತ್ತ ಹೋದ ಆನೆ ಹಳ್ಳ ಎಂದು ಅರಿಯದೆ ಹಳ್ಳಕ್ಕೆ ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಬಿದ್ದ ಆನೆಗೆ ಸ ಸರಪಳಿ ಕಟ್ಟಿ ಬಂಧಿಸುತ್ತಾರೆ ಬಂಧಿಸಿದ ಆನೆಯನ್ನು ಮೇಲೆತ್ತಿ ಒಡೆದು ಬಡಿದು ಹಿಂಸಿಸಿ ಕೊಳಗಿಸ್ತಾರೆ ಕೊಳಗಿದ ಆನೆ ತನ್ನ ಸಹಜ ಸ್ವಭಾವ ಮರೆತು ಕೊಳಗಿಸಿದವನ ನಮ್ರ ಸೇವಕ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಸೇವಕತನವೇ ಅದರ ಸ್ವಭಾವ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಆಫ್ರಿಕಾದ ಕರಿಯರ್ ಎಂಬ ಆನೆಯನ್ನು ಹಳ್ಳಕ್ಕೆ ಬಿಡಿಸಲಾಯಿತು ಬಂಧಿಸಿಯೂ ಆಯಿತು ಒಡೆದು ಬಿಡದು ಹಿಂಸಿ ಪಳಗಿಸಲು ಪ್ರಯತ್ನವನ್ನು ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೂ ಆಯಿತು ಆದರೆ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಆಫ್ರಿಕಾದ ಕರಿಯರ್ ಎಂಬ ಆನೆ ಕೊಳಗಲಿಲ್ಲ ಕೊಳಗದಿದ್ದಕ್ಕೆ ಹೆಚ್ಚಿನ ಹಿಂಸೆ ಒಲೆ ಸುಲಿಗೆ ದೌರ್ಜನ್ಯ ಎದುರಿಸ ದೌರ್ಜನ್ಯವನ್ನು ಎದುರಿಸಬೇಕಾಯಿತು ಆದರೆ ಭಾರತದ ಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯರೆಂಬ ಆನೆ ಪಳಗಿ ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದೆ ಇದು ಪುರಾತನ ಕಾಲದಲ್ಲೇ ಪಳಗಿಸಲ್ಪಟ್ಟ ಕಾರಣ ಈ ಕ್ರೌರ್ಯ ನಮಗೆ ಕಾಣಿಸ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಪಳಗಿಸಿದವನಿಗೂ ಈಗ ತಾನು ಪಳಗಿಸಿದವನು ಎಂಬ ನಿಂತಿಲ್ಲ ಪಳಗಿಸಲ್ಪಟ್ಟವನಿಗೂ ತಾನು ಪಳಗಿಸಲ್ಪಟ್ಟವನು ಎಂಬ ನಿಂತಿಲ್ಲ ತಾರತಮ್ಯವು ಸಮಾಜದಲ್ಲಿ ಆಂತರಿಕವಾಗಿ ವ್ಯಾಪಿಸಿ ಅದೇ ಸ್ವಭಾವವಾಗಿ ಸಹಜ ಪದ್ಧತಿಯಾಗುತ್ತಿದೆ ಯಾವುದು ಈಗ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಯಾವುದು ಹೆಚ್ಚು ದಾರುಣವಾಗುತ್ತದೆ ಇದನ್ನು ಹೇಗೆ ವಿವರಿಸೋಣ ಪ್ರಾಥಮಿಕ ಹಂತದ ಅಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯತೆಯನ್ನು ವರ್ಣ ಭೇದ ಎಂದು ಅಥವಾ ವರ್ಣ ಭೇದದ ಮುತ್ತಾತ ಅಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯತೆ ಎಂದು ಒಟ್ಟಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಒಟ್ಟಿನಲ್ಲಿ ವರ್ಣ ಭೇದದಂತಹ ಪ್ರತ್ಯೇಕತೆ ನಿರ್ಬಂಧ ನಿಷಿದ್ಧ ಭೇದಗಳು ಸಾವಿರಾರು ವರ್ಷಗಳು ಬದುಕುಳಿದು ಧರ್ಮ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ದೇವರುಗಳನ್ನು ಬಳಸಿಕೊಂಡು ಆಚರಣೆಯಾಗಿ ಬರ್ತಾರೆ ಅದೇ ಅಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯತೆಯಾಗಿದೆ So the next
where the central protagonist Sakawa is inviting her uh, grandson Shibu to accompany her to look for a rooster, her rooster, which uh, has gone missing. So that is the sequence which uh, he will read next. Allondo, Illondo, Vagea is a ran. Manegara, written a market case of the girl, Gelta, Birta, Bundo, Saka on a kiri, Ninto, Cariole Nigro, Saka wa, Suna Cario, Sumo Bunte, Bapo was he, Nanandin Nurkan Bro, and Sumo, ah, undo, Unja did the Bundurado, Iga Catalin and Gazerta, Ogamo. Saka wa kalmiti puta wa lamdalo, adyaka na ilwan. Nidra yamadoru wa idra. Shubhu ge adanu tanna kanu wali tanu kulalo chigalila. Dep kanu puta wali tanu. Saka wa lamdalo, aurga hal damar dgaatu tanisa daran dgaala hello. Auru nin erkan dodra. Ay tagi taga. Nanya Kalkunda de Mugara, Nane Batin in the Rio. Amela Amela Origenta Mugru, Nani Yamada Mora in Toka Saka would have pined the Matabu of Burkitante, our soup in the Madida Alla of Charma, our Muka the Halila the Pai, Tale and Rakudalu, Mayavago Saka would have been put over Chicken Yamada or Maraja Yenu Marino. Auna Namati got the Simas in the good condo. Yamado Yamudu through Kakamatarela, our six upon him. Adkuruninge, Ezra Lua, Adalwa, I Narlo Kadalin on Patton Takastaka, a six Yelga to Taga, Aunja Telu Adiantinikana. Tigoria, Chikiagita, Sakawa, Giga, Brisire, Arado of Kundar, a card again. Bolakuta, Deo Kandikia. Oh no, the Kiran Dano, Adakama, Aitumuki, in direct Miss D, Yen Vorabeko Kirta. Niga, did he see a to Harad of a food or a Kalaga to Bolakuta, Deo Kandikio, than a Kirubali? Who look an artist? Mela? Adkanano, Nodus for me, then Mom goes on a look at the Rajbara Maravan to her. As to Pakuan, Sue, Enesuta, Sue, not Diana Murdo, Saka Murdo, Diga, Nanunjan and Urkan Paravan, Apusu, Sue, Sakawa, the Mount of on Kalaska, on Kalasa, his Kanabak, Sue, Sue, Kalasa, and Kelly of Kundu. Oh, Adaka y Katali at the Bidu Bandai? What do wait to Anta and Karsumiro? Sakawa, Galaka Kaiko to Miraluta, Urugu, Yudu, Misumna, Galas Kurmata, what do wood danta, Ilva? Ad Hogli, Amel Torstini, Yinana Manade Urga, Menesinka and Waga Koto, and Alak, Keradali, Chara Mara, Parasta, ah, Indo. Kalas head kando, means the Sioux Kay head kando, Saka wa Kolo Ulta, Kavo Anupita, Katarega Ulta. So, in my mind, this is one of the more remarkable passages in modern Canada literature uh, for reasons which will become quite evident uh, as you uh, read through the translation. Uh, we can discuss some more of this uh, uh, in a little bit. Uh, now we will have the performance of uh, Kusuma Bale yeah. from Janni. Um, yeah. And I'll uh, just set up the translation for that. And I'll invite Janni to come and recite the, uh, the fourth section, the uh, two pages from uh, Kusuma Bale. Yeah.
ಈ ವ್ಯಾಳದಲ್ಲಿ ಬರೋ ಕಿಚ್ಚು ಹಾಯಿಸುವ ಹಬ್ಬದ ಸಡಗರವು ನಾಗಲಕೇರಿಲಿ ನಡೆದಾಡಿ ಊರ್ಗ ದೊಡ್ಡೋರ ಹಟ್ಟಿ ಕುಳಿದು ಕುಪ್ಪಳಿಸುತ್ತಿದ್ದಾಗ ಆ ಕಾಲದಲ್ಲಿ ಸಿದ್ದೂರನ್ ವರ ಜೀವ ಮಾಡಿ ಎಷ್ಟು ಹೋಗಿದ್ದ ಅಕ್ಕ ಮಹಾದೇವ ಮೈಯಾಡರ ದೇಹಕ್ಕ ಸಂಜೆ ಆಗುತ್ತಾಗುತ್ತ ಸೂಲು ಎಂಬುದು ಕೂಡಿಕೊಳ್ಳುತ್ತಾ ಗಕ್ಕಿಟ್ಟವಳಾಗಿ ಕೂತಿದ್ದ ಅಕ್ಕ ಮಹಾದೇವ ಮನ್ನ ಕಣ್ಣುಗಳ ನೀರ್ನ ಪೋಡಿ ಹೊರದು ಕೆರೆಯ ಸೇರುತ್ತಿರಲು ಪಾಯ ಹೊಟ್ಟಗ ತಲ ಹಾಕಿ ಆಡನು ಕಣ್ಣು ರಪ್ಯ ಮುಚ್ಚೋದು ತೆಗೆಯೋದು ಸುತ್ತ ಕಣ್ಣಾಡ್ಸೋದು ಮಾಡುತ್ತಿರಲು ಅವನ ಒಳಗಲ ದ್ರವವೆಲ್ಲ ಹಿಂಗಿಗದುದಾಗಿ ಅವನ ಬತ್ತಿದ್ದ ನೇತ್ರಗಳಿಂದ ನೀರು ಎಂಬುದು ತಾನೇ ಬರಲು ಎಲ್ಲಿತ್ತು ಎಂಬುವಂತಿರಲು ಯಾಡನ ತಲ್ವ ಭೂಮಿ ಮ್ಯಾಲ ಇಟ್ಟವಳಾಗೆ ಎದ್ದು ಅಕ್ಕ ಮಾದೇವಮ್ಮ ನಡೆದವಳಾಗಿ ಬಂದಳು ಆ ಕಣ್ಣೀರು ತುಂಬಿದ್ದ ಕೆರೆಯ ಕರೆಗ ಶರಣು ಆ ಕೆರೆಗ ಮೂರು ಸಲ ಮಾಡಿದಳು ಕಣ್ಣುಗ ಕೆರೆಯ ನೀರ ಮೂರು ಸಲ ಒತ್ತಿಕೊಂಡಳು ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥಿಸುತ್ತ ಮೂರು ಬಗಸ ನೀರ ಕುಡ್ದಾಳು ಆ ಸರಗಿನ ತುದಿಯ ನೀರಗದ್ದಿದಳು ನೀರು ಕುಡಿದ ಸೆರಗ ತುದಿಯ ತನ್ನೆಡು ಕೈಲು ಹಿಡಿದು ತಂದು ಆಯಾಡಾನ ಬಾಯ ಆ ಹಕ್ಕಿಯ ಬಾಯ ಬಿಡಿಸೂತ ಕುಂತು ಆ ನೀರು ಕುಡಿದ ತುದಿ ಸೆರಗ ನೀರ ತೊಟ್ಟಿಕ್ಕಿಸುತ್ತಿರಲು ಆಗ ಆಯಾಡನ ದೇಹದಲ್ಲೂ ದ್ರವವಾಡಿ ಬಂತು ಆಗ ಯಾಡನ ಕಣ್ಣುಗಳಲ್ಲೂ ನೀರಾಡಿ ಬಂತು ಅಲ್ಲಗ ಭೂಮಿ ತಾಯ ತನ್ನೇಡು ರೆಕ್ಕೆಗಳು ತೆಂಗಿನ ಗರಿಯ ರೂಪದಲ್ಲಿ ಬರುವಂತಾಗಲು ಅಕ್ಕಮಾದೇವಮ್ಮ ಯಾಡರು ಕೂತ ಜಾಗವು ಅಲ್ಲಗ ನೆರಳಾಯಿತು uh thank you jandi uh, we wanted to provide the audience an experience of how the uh you know the distinction between prose and poetry just breaks down in these passages um i will have a few more excerpts uh, that i'll you know uh, discuss during my uh, presentation in a little bit so what we will do next is to discuss uh, two or three questions which will draw out uh, madhavas uh, uh, literary projects uh, literary sensibility and also his political concerns uh, so we will begin with a question on his literary sensibility um, and he has been seen primarily as one of the pioneers of new dalit writings in canada um, his writings are also marked by constant experimentation which is quite unusual among his contemporaries and even among his junior writers uh, so i uh, invited him actually to think about and, and reflect back on his own writing career what inspired him uh, how did his literary sensibility actually shape took shape and what were the motivations uh, that actually took him down this path ನಿಮ್ಮ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯ ಸಂವೇದನೆಯ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಕೆಲವು ಮಾತುಗಳನ್ನು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಅನುಭವಗಳು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಚಿಂತನೆಯನ್ನು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಹಂಚಿಕೊಂಡು ಗೇನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ವಿ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ 
uh, remarks uh, for the benefit of the audience. As he speaks, you can also read the uh, response. Police lack of penalty and mudal lekate parde. Ado sadaran varkate. Intermediate student avaga. Kate is ro kattala thiru anta. Nan appa police constable lagi thoro. Nan intermediate nali fail lagi thay English matto niyam nali. Yerdo sa. Is na fail lagi thay karana. Nan kate puska bojo do. Yes, in a car and answer, but in an upper textbook girl, not to take it put to lock up in a lock put room. Aga brother to the Mudal Kate, Katalaki Ruanda. Nan Borio Kaldali, not busy with their team, Borio Kaldali, no way sight there, Utunga still it. Nana Vodanata Kura, Promuka no way sight to the Tene, etchet. ಆಪ್ರವಾದದ Matundu Kendra Neila Ige, Muru undundu are a Muruku put on some manetito. Our Victi Kendrita Kategarade, Bazaragi, Samuda the Kateaga the K, Aunstaito. E Kategara Murka Nano Hitta Jagaru Victi Prajenda, Samuda the Prajanana, Stalantra Marbuto, Internet. Anantranano, Rodaland Barde, Kusumbalan, Kusumbalan Barde. Ibu, Kanda Sight the Yadua Tadua Prayoga Noriti, Sweeker's Portal. Adre, even on a Barriva Grigli, Raja Purukwagi, Prayoga in the Prayatna Putne, Epression of Brote, Nano Grege Grege in the Kogi, Urukurukura, Au Prayoga Anta, Nana Kansaila, Yelm. Let me let me and Lekaki Inga Able or Unkare Victiaba Tana Basieli Nidaliru Mininanti Rutane Atu Rutane Hagage Lake Kerige Tamakala Kutiba Gestagi Tiludiru de la Anta on Matia Tore, Victorero, is on Jerbuko Adan Naniga and Bostai. Dikila Dante, Catalan in other Catalan in other than Te Nanita head jigger and get Tiku tourist the Vieno and a Sate Munde, Hechechu Mokiko, Jana Podio Agutene Age and a bash etch Moka white to under the Atavatagi Mokuko Allah Yawden Mursa Bekagidio, a was to a Gio Alici. Other Nurtake, Axra, Kuru, a Preta than the Bashe than the Catanagali, Intalte Agaridu was a Prayoga way. Mumbatanes at the man the lake, Canada, the Adik with Pampa, Tanada Cavia, Tanacavia, the Bashe Yauriti and Tante, Puligari, Puligari, a Trulu Kaccha was to in the Imbante Purish the Pampa, a Bashi at Tirulu, Punitak and a Kavade Pasta Matikurta. Aye, Nana Katana the Pasi Kura, Nanjan Guru, Nanjana Guru Sutra in Okobasi at three Tiruninda, under the Napades, the Keria Munina Likara, Lugrahadante, Ili Pasi, Mita Isanta, Ebo there. Adinika Joka, Basi and Rupin and Tepper Sutta, which are a book in Adibo Rupis or Katana the Charmadanti, Astella, Panchendra than Diokura. 
ಈ ಮೂರ್ಛಾವಸ್ಥ ಸ್ಥಿತಿಯ ಸಮುದಾಯ ನೆಲದಿಂದ ಮೂಡುವ ಕೃತಿಯೊಳಗೆ ಆಧುನಿಕ ವೈಚಾರಿಕ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಮತ್ತು ಹೇಗೆ ಕಲಾಕೃತಿಯಾದುದರಿಂದ ಅದು ಅನುಭವದೊಳಗೆ ಸಂಭವಿಸಬೇಕಾಗುತ್ತದೆ ಬಹುಶಃ ಈ ರೀತಿ ಇರ್ಬೋದಾ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಅದು ಒಂದು ಐಪಾತಿಸ ಭೂಮಿಯ ಆಳದಲ್ಲಿರುವ ಜಲದ ಸೆಲೆಯಂತೆ ಇರ್ಬೋದಾ ಅಂದರೆ ಡ್ರಿಲ್ ಮಾಡಿದರೆ ಮಾತ್ರ ಹೊರಬರುವ ಜೀವ ಜಲದಂತೆ ಮತ್ತು ಬೀಜದೊಳಗಿನ ವೃಕ್ಷದಂತೆ ಅಂದರೆ ನಾಳೆಗಳ ಸತ್ವವನ್ನು ಬಚ್ಚಿಟ್ಟುಕೊಂಡಿರುವ ಸ್ಥಿತಿಯಂತೆ ಹಾಗೆ ತನ್ನ ಸಮುದಾಯದ ಓದುಗರೇ ಅಪರೂಪವಾಗಿರುವ ಇಂಥ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಸಮುದಾಯದ ಲೇಖಕನೊಬ್ಬ ಯಾರನ್ನು ತನ್ನ ಓದುಗರೆಂದು ಉದ್ದೇಶಿಸಿ ಬರೆಯಬೇಕು ಇತರರಿಗೆಂದು ಬರೆದರೆ ಆ ಬರವಣಿಗೆ ಇತರರ ಆಸಕ್ತಿ ಕುತೂಹಲ ಪೂರೈಸಲು ಮಾನವ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರೀಯ ವಸ್ತುವಿನಂತಾಗಿರುವುದರಿಂದ ತನ್ನ ಸಮುದಾಯದ ಗಾಯದ ಮೇಲೆ ಆ ಸಮುದಾಯದ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾವಂತನೆ ಬರೆಯಿಡದಂತಾಗುವುದಿಲ್ಲವೇ ಹಾಗೂ ಮೂಲತಃ ಸಂವೇದನಶೀಲವಾದ ಸೃಷ್ಟಿಕ್ರಿಯೆಯು ಸಂವೇದನಶೀಲವಾದ ಸೃಷ್ಟಿಕ್ರಿಯೆಯು ಸೆಲೆ ಸೃಷ್ಟಿಕ್ರಿಯೆ ಸೆಲೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಅದು ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಜೀವವಾಗುವ ಪ್ರಕ್ರಿಯೆಯೂ ಆಗಿರುವುದರಿಂದ ಸೃಷ್ಟಾತ್ಮಕತೆಯ ಸತ್ವದ ಆ ಬೆಳಕನ್ನೂ ಉಳಿಸಿಕೊಂಡು ಹಾಗೂ ಅಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯತೆಯ ಗಾಯವನ್ನು ಅದು ಗಾಯ ಎಂದು ಸಂವೇದಿಸಿ ಆ ಸ್ಥಿತಿಗೆ ಎಚ್ಚರ ಘನತೆ ಕಾಣಿಸುವುದು ಹೇಗೆ ಅಸಹಾಯಕನಾಗಿ ನನ್ನನ್ನು ನಾನು ನನ್ನನ್ನೇ ಮುಂದೆ ಕೂಡಿಸಿಕೊಂಡು ಬರೆಯತೊಡಗಿದರೆ ಆಗ ನಾನು ಸಮುದಾಯದ ಮನೋಭೂಮಿಕೆಗೆ ಕೂಡಿ ಸಮಷ್ಟಿಯೇ ತನ್ನನ್ನು ಅಭಿವ್ಯಕ್ತಿಸಿಕೊಳ್ಳಬಹುದೇ ನಾನು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಇರಬೇಕು ದೂರದ ಬಂಗಾಳದ ಆದಿವಾಸಿ ಸಂತಾಲ್ ಬುಡಕಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಸೇರಿದ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯದ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಯೊಬ್ಬ ನನ್ನ ಅಮಾಸ ಕತೆ ಬಂಗಾಳಕ್ಕೆ ಬಂಗಾಳಿಗೆ ಅನುವಾದ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ಅದನ್ನು ಓದಿ ಇದು ನನ್ನ ಟ್ರೈಬ್ನ ನನ್ನದೇ ಕತೆ ಬರೆದವನು ಖಂಡಿತ ನನ್ನ ಬುಡಕಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಸೇರಿದವನು ಎಂದು ಮುಂಡು ಮುಂಡಾಗಿ ವಾದಿಸಿದರಂತೆ ಅವನಿಗೆ ಕೃತಜ್ಞತೆಗಳಾಗಿ ಕೆಲಸುತ್ತದೆ ಮೈ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಇನ್ವೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಮ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಲಿಟ್ರಿ ಸೆನ್ಸಿಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಡೂ ವಿಸ್ ಹೌ ಹಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಹಿ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜಸ್ ಟು ರೀಕನ್ಸೈಲ್ ದಿ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಡಿಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಎವಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆಡ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಫೈಂಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಆಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೋರ್ ಯುನೀಕ್ thinkers in 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 so far as his ability to reconcile uh, contradictions is concerned so uh, it, this comes uh, across quite strongly in the way in which he discusses gandhi and ambedkar um, and therefore i uh, requested him to talk about his own understanding of uh, indian social world neevu bharatada samajavanna hege grahistira adanna ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೋತೀರಾ ಅಂತ ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನ ರೂಪಗಳ ಮೂಲಕನೇ ನೀವು ನೋಡ್ತಾ ಬಂದಿದ್ದೀರಾ ಅದನ್ನ ಹೇಗೆ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡೋದು ಈಗ ನಾನು ಒಂದು ಘಟನೆಯ ಮುಖಾಂತರ ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಕೊಡ್ತೀನಿ ನಮಗೆಲ್ಲ ಉತ್ತರ ಭಾರತದ ರೈತ ಸಂಘಟನೆಯ ಮಹಾನ್ ನಾಯಕ ಮಹೇಂದ್ರ ಸಿಂಗ್ ಟಿಕಾಯಿತ್ ಅವರು ಗೊತ್ತು ಇವರನ್ನು ಭಾರತದ ಜಾತಸ್ಥ ಮನಸ್ಸಿಗೆ ಪ್ರಾತಿನಿಧಿಕ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಎಂದೆನಬಹುದು ಅವರೊಂದ್ಸಲ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ರೈತ ಸಂಘದ ಸಭೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಭಾಗವಹಿಸೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಆದರೆ ಈಗ ಒಂದೇ ಕಾಲಮಾನದಲ್ಲಿ ಎರಡು ಸಭೆಗಳಿಗೆ ಒಪ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿರ್ತಾರೆ ಅವರು ಒಂದು ಮಾಜಿ ಪ್ರಧಾನಿ ದೇವೇಗೌಡರ ಪಕ್ಷದ ಸಭೆ ಅದು ಬೆಂಗಳೂರಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಬೃಹತ್ ಸಭೆ ನಡೀತಾ ಇರ್ತದೆ ಪೊಲಿಟಿಕಲ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಸಭೆ ಅದು ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ರೈತ ಹೋರಾಟದ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಎಂ ಡಿ ನಂಜುಂಡಸ್ವಾಮಿಯವರ ಸಭೆ ಅದು ಬಳ್ಳಾರಿ ಜಿಲ್ಲೆಯ ಹೊಸಪೇಟೆನಲ್ಲಿ ದೂರದ ಹೊಸಪೇಟೆನಲ್ಲಿ ನಡೀತಾ ಇರ್ತದೆ ವಿಮಾನದಲ್ಲಿ ಇಳಿದು ಬಂದು ಇಳಿದಾಗ ಟಿಕಾಯಿತ್ತವರು ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಯವ್ರು ಕೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ನೀವು ಯಾವ ಕಡೆ ಹೋಗ್ತೀರಿ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಕಡೆ
ಯಾರೋ ಒಬ್ಬ ರೈತ ಸಂಘದ ಕಾರ್ಯಕರ್ತ ಹೋರಾಟದ ಹಿನ್ನೆಲೆಯ ರೈತ ಸಂಘದ ಕಾರ್ಯಕರ್ತ ಕಾಯ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಟಿಕ್ಕ ಇತ್ತು ಕೃಷ್ಣವ್ರ ಕಡೆ ಒಂದ್ಸಲ ನೋಡಿ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ರೈತರು ಇರ್ತಾರೋ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಟವಲ್ನ ಈ ಥರ ಟವಲ್ನ ಹಿಂಗೆ ಬಿಸಾಕಿ ಒಂದು ಸಲ ಕೊಡವಿ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ ಅವರು ರೈತ ಸಂಘದ ಕಾರ್ಯಕರ್ತರು ನಿಂತಿರ್ತಾನಲ್ಲ ಒಂಟಿಯಾಗಿ ಆ ಕಾರ್ಗತ್ತೆ ಅವರು ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ನಂಜುಂಡ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಅವರ ಸಭೆಗೆ ರೈತರ ಹೋರಾಟದ ಸಭೆಗೆ ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಮಾಡೋಕೆ ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ ಇದನ್ನು ಭಾರತದ ಜಾತಸ್ಥ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನ ಪ್ರಾಥಮಿಕ ಮನಸ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಇರುವ ವಿವೇಕ ಮತ್ತು ವಿವೇಚನೆ ಎನ್ಬೋದು ಅವರು ಹೌದು ಮಿಡಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾ ಪಿಡಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾಸ್ಟೇ ನಿಜ ಆದರೂ ಅದಕ್ಕೊಂದು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಒಂದು ವಿವೇಕ ವಿವೇಚನೆ ಇದೆ ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಇದು ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಈ ಘಟನೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಟಿಕಾಯಿದ್ದೇ ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಡ್ತೀನಿ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಸಲ ಅದೇ ಎಂ ಡಿ ಎನ್ ಸಮಾರಂಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಎಂ ಡಿ ನಂಜು ಚಂದ್ರ ಸಮಾರಂಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಭಾಗವಹಿಸಿ ರೈತ ಸದ ಹೋರಾಟದಲ್ಲಿ ಭಾಗವಹಿಸಿಕ್ಕೆ ಅವ್ರು ಬರ್ತಾರೆ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕಕ್ಕೆ ಅವರು ಉತ್ತರ ಪ್ರದೇಶದವರು ನಾರ್ತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಬಂದಾಗ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಆ ಸಭೆಯೆಲ್ಲ ಮುಗಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ಮಲಗೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಒಂದು ಟ್ರಾವ್ಲರ್ಸ್ ಬಂಗ್ಲೋ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ ಅದು ವಿಶಾಲವಾಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಟಿಕ್ಕ ಆಯ್ತು ಬೆಚ್ಚು ಬಿದ್ದು ಬಿಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅದನ್ನು ನೋಡಿ ಏನಪ್ಪ ಇದು ಇಷ್ಟು ದೊಡ್ಡದಿದು ಒಂಚು ಏನು ಇಷ್ಟು ವಿಶಾಲವಾಗಿದೆ ಫ್ಯಾನ್ ಇದೆ ಮಂಚ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಮಂಚ ನೋಡಿದ್ರೆ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಜನ ಮಲಿಕಳತ್ರ ಇದೆ ಹೆಂಗಪ್ಪ ನಿದ್ದೆ ಮಾಡೋದಿಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಸಾಧಾರಣವಾದ ಒಂದು ಬಂಗ್ಲೋ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಟ್ರಾವ್ಲರ್ಸ್ ಬಂಗ್ಲೋ ನೀವು ಮಲಿಗಳೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅವ್ರು ಸಾಧ್ಯ ನಂಗೆ ನಿದ್ದೆ ಬರೋಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯವೇ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಮಕ್ಕಳ ರೀತಿ ಮುಂಡಿಡಿತಾರೆ ಅವರು ಕೊನೆಗೆ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಯಾರದೋ ರೈತನ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹಗ್ಗದ ಮಂಚದ ಮೇಲೆ ಮುಳಿಸಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ಅವರು ಸುಖವಾದ ನಿದ್ದೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಇದು ಆ ಆ ಪ್ರಾಥಮಿಕ ಫ್ಯೂಡಲ್ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನ ವಿವೇಕ ಅದಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಸರಳತೆ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿಸಿಟಿ ಅನ್ನೋದು ವಿವೇಕ ಆಯಿತು ಸರಳತೆ ಆಯಿತು ಇದೇ ಮುಂದೆ ಇದೇ ಟೀಕಾಯಿತು ಹೀಗೆ ಒಂದು ಸಲ ಏನೊಂದು ಹೇಳಿಕೆ ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂತರ್ಜಾತಿ ವಿವಾಹ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಳ್ಳುವವರ ಕೈಗಳನ್ನು ಕತ್ತರಿಸಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಅಂತರ್ಜಾತಿ ಕೈ ಮದುವೆ ಆಗ್ತಾರಲ್ಲ ಅವರುಗಳ ಕೈಗಳನ್ನು ಕತ್ತರಿಸಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿಕೆ ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಬಹುಶಃ ಇದು ಭಾರತದ ಚತಸ್ಥ ಟುಡಲ್ ಮನಸ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಇರುವ ಕ್ರೌರ್ಯ ಅನಿಸುತ್ತೆ ನೋಡಿ ವಿವೇಕ ಇದೆ ಸರಳತೆ ಇದೆ ಕ್ರೌರ್ಯನೋ ಬಹುಶಃ ಮೊದಲ ಎರಡು ಅಂದರೆ ವಿವೇಕ ಮತ್ತು ವಿವೇಚನೆ ಸರಳತೆಗಳು ಗಾಂಧೀಜಿಗೆ ಹೆಚ್ಚಾಗಿ ಕಾಣಿಸ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ಟುಡಲ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇರೋದು ಅಂತ ಅನಿಸುತ್ತೆ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಮೂರನೇದು ಈ ಭಾರತ ಜಾತಸ್ಥ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನ ಕ್ರೌರ್ಯ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಅಂಬೇಡ್ಕರ್ಗೆ ಹೆಚ್ಚಿಗೆ ಕಾಣಿಸ್ತಿತ್ತು ಅಂತ ಅನಿಸುತ್ತೆ ಈ ವಿವೇಕ ವಿವೇಚನ ಈ ವಿವೇಕ ವಿವೇಚನೆ ಹಾಗೂ ಸರಳತೆಯನ್ನು ಕಾಪಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಈ ಕ್ರೌರ್ಯವನ್ನು ಕತ್ತರಿಸಿ ಬಿಸಾಕಿ ಭಾರತಕ್ಕೆ ಘನತೆ ಮತ್ತು ಮನುಷ್ಯತ್ವ ತಂದು ಕೊಡುವುದು ಹೇಗೆ ಈಗ ನಮ್ಮ ಕಣ್ಮುಂದೆ ಇರೋದು ಇದು ಸಮಸ್ಯೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಬೇಡ್ಕರ್ ಮತ್ತು ಈ ಗಾಂಧೀಜಿ ಇಬ್ಬರೂ ಒಂದು ವಿಚಾರದಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದೇ ಅಭಿಪ್ರಾಯವನ್ನು ಹೊಂದಿದ್ರು ಏನಪ್ಪ ಅಂದರೆ ಅಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯತೆ ಸಮಸ್ಯೆ ಅಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯರ ಸಮಸ್ಯೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಎಂದು ಇಬ್ಬರೂ ಭಾವಿಸಿದರು ಅಂದರೆ ಅಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯರು ಜಾತಿ ಪದ್ಧತಿಗೆ ಬಲಿಪಸಿಗಳು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಸಮಸ್ಯೆ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯತೆಯನ್ನು ಆಚರಣೆ ಮಾಡುವವರಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂದರೆ ಯಾರು ಆಚರಣೆ ಮಾಡುತ್ತಾರೋ ಅದು ಅವರ ಸಮಸ್ಯೆ ಇದು ಭಾರತದ ಅಂತಸಾಕ್ಷಿ ಆದರೆ ಇದು ಭಾರತದ ಅಂತಸಾಕ್ಷಿಯಾದ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾವಂತರು ಲೇಖಕರು ಕಲಾವಿದರು ಪತ್ರಕರ್ತರು ನ್ಯಾಯವಂತರು ಅಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯತೆಯನ್ನು ದಲಿತ ಸಮಸ್ಯೆ ಅಂದ್ಕೊಂಡು ಸುಮ್ಮನಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಇದು ನನ್ನ ಖಿನ್ನತೆಗೆ ಕಾರಣವಾಗಿದೆ ಹಾಗೆಯೇ
The last question that we wanted to address has to do with his worldview, which builds on this uh, capacity to see simplicity, wisdom, and cruelty in the same self, like in the same self-conception. So I asked him to think about how his worldview was shaped, and he chose to read a short parable that he wrote in which he used um, as an example one of the tribal communities, the practices of a tribal community, and then um, contrasted that with conceptions of egalitarianism which come from um, socialism and other uh, left-oriented uh, um, uh, doctrines which uh, were part of a progressive tradition in, in Karnataka. So uh, I invited him to read this as a way of exemplifying his worldview. ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯವಾಗಿ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಜೀವನ ದೃಷ್ಟಿ ಏನು ಲೋಕ ದೃಷ್ಟಿ ಏನು ಅನ್ನೋ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಗಳು ಆಗಾಗ ಎದುರಾಗ್ತವೆ ತಾಂತ್ರಿಕ ಪದಗಳಿಂದ ನನ್ನ ಹೇಳೋಕ್ಕೆ ನನ್ನ ನಾಲ್ಗೆ ತೊದಲುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಅಥವಾ ನಾನು ಕಲಿತ ವಿದ್ಯೆಯಿಂದಲೂ ಪಡೆದ ಜ್ಞಾನದಿಂದಲೂ ಹೇಳೋಟ್ರೆ ಅದು ನನಗೆ ತುಂಬ ಶ್ರಮ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಕಲಿತ ವಿದ್ಯೆಯನ್ನು ಆರ್ಗಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಕಣ್ಮುಂದೆ ಕಾಣುವ ಜೀವನ ವಿವರಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳೋಟ್ರೆ ಆಗ ನನಗೆ ದೊಂಬರ ಪರ ಕಾಣಿಸುತ್ತೆ ಮನೋರಂಜನೆ ನೀಡುತ್ತಾ ಹೊಟ್ಟೆ ತುಂಬಿಸಿಕೊಳ್ಳೋ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಲೆಮಾರಿ ಸಮುದಾಯ ದೊಂಬರು ಆಗಾಗ ಪರ ಅಂತ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ತಾವು ಸಂಗ್ರಹಿಸಿದ ದವಸ ಧಾನ್ಯಗಳಿಂದ ಒಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಅಡಿಗೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಒಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಒಂದು ಮರದ ಕಡೆಗೆ ಉಣ್ಣುತ್ತಾರೆ ಈ ಸಾಮೂಹಿಕ ಉಣ್ಣುವ ಕ್ರಿಯೆಗೆ ಮೊದಲು ನಾನಾ ಕಾರಣಗಳಿಂದ ಪಂಕ್ತಿಗೆ ಬರಲಾದವನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಲೆಕ್ಕ ಹಾಕಿ ಉದಾಹರಣೆಗೆ ನಡೆಯಲಾಗದ ವಯಸ್ಸಾದವರು ಕಾಯಿಲೆ ಬಿದ್ದು ಬರಲಾಗದವರು ಬಾಣಂತಿಯರು ಹೀಗೆ ಪಂಕ್ತಿ ಊಟಕ್ಕೆ ಬಾರದವರ ಪಾಲನ್ನು ಎತ್ತಿಡ್ತಾರೆ ಮೊದಲು ಹೀಗೆ ಮಾಡುವಾಗ ಎತ್ತಿಡುವಾಗ ಬಸರಿ ಹೆಣ್ಣು ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ಎರಡು ಪಾಲನ್ನು ಎತ್ತಿಡ್ತಾರೆ ಒಂದು ಪಾಲು ಆ ಗರ್ಭಿಣಿ ಹೆಂಗಸಿಗೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಪಾಲು ಆ ಗರ್ಭಸ್ಥ ಶಿಶುವಿಗೆ ಬಹುಶಃ ಇದು ನನ್ನ ಲೋಕದೃಷ್ಟಿ ಹೌದು ಇದು ಸ್ಥೂಲವಾಗಿ ಸಮಾಜವಾದದ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಸಮ್ನ ಪರಿಸರವಾದದ ಜೀವನ ಕ್ರಮವಾಗಿದೆ ಹೌದು ದೊಂಬರು ಪುರ ಮಾಡುವಾಗ ನೆರಳಾಗಿದ್ದ ಬಂಧುತ್ವದ ಸಮಾನತೆಯ ಹಂಚಿ ಉಣ್ಣುವ ಮರ ಇಂದು ಈ ಕಾಲಮಾನಕ್ಕೆ ಸಿಕ್ಕಿ ಉರುಳಿ ಹೋಗಿದೆ ಎನ್ನುತ್ತಾರೆ ಅದು ಉರುಳಿ ಹೋದದ್ದಲ್ಲ ಬಕಾಸುರ ಬಂಡ ಒಳಕ್ಕೆ ಬಲಿಯಾದ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ತನ್ನ ಮನುಷ್ಯತ್ವವನ್ನು ಕಳೆದುಕೊಂಡು ಆ ಮರವನ್ನು ಕತ್ತರಿಸಿ ಉರುಳಿಸಿದ್ದು ಅದು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಇಂದು ಸಮಾಜವಾದದ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಸಮ್ನ ಮರ ಉರುಳಿ ಹೋಗಿದೆ ಎಂಬ ನುಡಿಗಟ್ಟನ್ನು ಈ ಜಾಗತೀಕರಣ ಚಾಲ್ತಿಗೆ ತಂದಿದೆ ಆದರೆ ಉರುಳಿ ಹೋಗಿದೆ ಎಂದು ಹೇಳೋದಾಗುತ್ತಿರೋ ಈ ಮರ ಸಮಾಜವಾದಿರಬಹುದು ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಸಮ್ ಇರಬಹುದು ಸಮಾನತೆಯ ಮರ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಅರಳಿ ಮರದಂತೆ ಅರಳಿ ಮರವನ್ನು ಕತ್ತರಿಸಿ ಧ್ವಂಸ ಮಾಡಿದರು ಅದರ ಹುಟ್ಟು ಅಲ್ಲಿರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅನಿಸಿದರು ಆದರೂ ಆ ಧ್ವಂಸಗೊಂಡ ಅರಳಿ ಮರದ ಬೇರು ಎತ್ತತ್ತ ಚಾಚಿಕೊಂಡಿರುತ್ತೋ ಅಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ಆ ಮರದ ಬೇರಿನ ಗಿಣ್ಣು ಕಣ್ಣುಗಳಿಂದಲೇ ಅರಳಿ ಗಿಡ ಒಂದು ಆ ನೆಲದ ಜಯಮಾನಕ್ಕೆ ಅನುಗುಣವಾಗಿ ಚಿಕ್ಕುತ್ತವೆ ಕಾಂಕ್ರೀಟ್ ಗೋಡೆಯನ್ನು ಹಿಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಆ ಬೇರು ಚಿಗುರಿ ಮರವಾಗಿ ಬೆಳೆಯುತ್ತದೆ ಹೀಗೆ ಸಮಾಜವಾದದ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಸಮ್ನ ಕನಸು ಚಿಗುರುತ್ತದೆ ಈ ನೆಲದ ಜಾಯಮಾನಕ್ಕೆ ಅನುಗುಣವಾಗಿ ಯಾಕೆಂದರೆ ಮನುಷ್ಯನಿಗೆ ಮನುಷ್ಯನಾಗಿ ಬದುಕೆಂಬ ವಾಂಚೆ ಮನುಷ್ಯನೊಳಗೂ ಇದೆ ಅಲ್ವೇ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಇಂಟರಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಆನ್ ದೋಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ that we wanted to discuss i'll try to build on this and uh, speak for the next 10 to 15 minutes on uh, what i think of his uh, thought his writings and also about uh, kannada dalits movement so those are the broad themes that i'd like to cover um and i'll share in the title uh, that we chose for this session um we used the term radical hope 
And that was by choice because I see Mahadeva in particular as um, the embodiment of a certain kind of radical hope. And if you saw even from you know, this last passage that he read, uh, the, the, la his last response, or from the excerpt that he read out from Vadalada where Sakawa is uh, um, searching for her lost rooster, but she's also um, in her conversation with her grandson, um, demonstrating a certain kind of courage, which is uh, the source of radical hope, right? And, and that is where I'd like to situate Mahadeva's uh, location, so to speak. When Sakawa says that her struggles on this earth are nothing in comparison with, are, are, are greater than what she might actually encounter in Yamaha's hell, you know, that is what gives her the courage to continue to uh, struggle, to continue to persevere. Right? When she talks about how she's going to punish all her gods if they don't uh, ensure that her rooster is returned to her, right? that is the kind of courage which is at the heart of uh, a new um, radical project that that uh, Mahadeva sees. And this I want to situate um, by way of a discussion of some of his writings. I have two or three more excerpts that I'd like to take you to, to give a flavor of his, uh, of his sentence construction as a way of exemplifying what Anu talked about uh, initially about his syntax, about uh, you know, the way he builds his characters and so on. Um, so there are three or four points that I quickly want to make uh, about Mahadeva and then I'll connect that to the broader project of uh, Dalita Bandaya literary movement in Karnataka. And um, again, in honor of uh, you know, Mahadeva's own project, I don't want to bring in uh, whether it's you know, uh, someone like Jonathan Lear uh, in talking about radical hope or you know, in, in, in seeing the, the kind of effort that is put into in order to overcome resentment, resentment, as Nietzsche would, would say. I'll, I'll try and stick to the text themselves and to the context of Karnataka to make some of these broader points. Uh, the, the two or three points that I want to quickly uh, draw your attention to. One is, you know, he's creating a new literary language and that language is coming from a dialect. And he talked about in his response to his literary sensible, how he shaped his literary sensibility. He talked about uh, Kannada Sadi Kavi, the, the first poet, Pampa, uh, and how Pampa used uh, the kernel of Puligere in Northern Karnataka as his, as the source of his literary language. And what Madheva does, and completely, you know, unusual in modern Kannada prose writing, is to use a dialect and the rhythm of the spoken language uh, completely breaking the monopoly of how fiction and short stories had been written until then in kind of formal Canada, um, uh, including for descriptive passages, Madeva begins to use uh, uh, the, uh, the regional dialect uh, spoken across castes, actually. So this new literary language sort of brings back uh, an egalitarian spirit, which enables Madeva to extend the limits of realism uh, whereby he is constantly anthropomorphizing things by creating characters out of uh, phenomena, things. Um, so the, uh, the thing which experience is not the human being, but it could be an organ, as we will see in one of the examples that I'm going to uh, read out in just a second. Right? So the, 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 uh, the agent who experiences an experience, uh, for example, it might simply be uh, tasting porridge, Right? It's the tongue, but not the, uh, the, the child who possesses that tongue. And that, those are the kinds of strategies and moves through which he's actually um, telling us a, a, a narrative about deprivement, about exploitation with great depth. Right? Um, that subtlety is, is something which is 
really unusual and and not achieved by uh, later writers and that marks the 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 craftsmanship of mahadeva's writing and and it becomes more clear in in one of uh, you know when we look at some of his uh, some of the examples that i have um, so what i'm trying to say is it's not simply the uh, adoption of a dialect uh, as literary language but what he does with that dialect the craftsmanship that he demonstrates as i was saying uh, wherein the the agent of who is experiencing or or you know the 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 fact that um uh phenomena actually become characters right from an old woman her worry actually separates itself out sits next to her and begins a conversation right so those kinds of narrative moves those kinds of um formal innovations actually uh, mark uh, a new aesthetic that he uh, brings in so uh, so his writing escapes from this constant uh, complaint against uh, much of dalit writing particularly in kannada but this is something that you might find in other languages also where poetry becomes sloganeering or stories become too obvious and self evident right so uh, in in these ways uh, what madeva is trying to do is to build a literary style a literary form wherein the distinction between uh, fiction and uh, poetry prose writing and poetry uh, story and poem breaks down uh, but the point is then to ask what is the source of this right this is not something that he is uh, inventing from 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 his uh, 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 literary mind so to speak uh, what is actually quite distinctive what is quite uh, interesting uh, is the way in which it is rooted in a local community so not only the language is coming from a dialect Uh, but the wisdom of that the narrative structures and the world views at play are all coming in from that uh, uh community so the region of nangjengudu which is just south of uh, mysore about 20 kilometers south of mysore that area uh, is providing not only the dialect the the vocabulary the, the words but it's so providing um the wisdom the narrative structures and world views so what do i mean by all this right so there is a, a a location in the form of identification with the local community and 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 taking its cultural resources but it's also a deeper connection that he's trying to build with uh with folk epics of that region uh wachana traditions which go back much further Uh, than the folk epics which are early modern period 15 16 17th century texts but which continue to be um, uh, you know recited and listened to uh, even now right and then you have uh, philosophical poems called tatvapadas and of course he's also um, opened himself to world literature during his formative years and and any conversation with him is often prefaced with you know a reference to a, a an aboriginal writer from australia or a writer from one of the uh, former soviet republics um, or from you know with with someone like marquez or tolstoy for that matter so classics uh, you know uh, folk poetry from across the world they all become part of his uh, his uh, of uh, his his inspiration so um, so this this deep rootedness in a community not just in the sense of um, you know um, having his uh, Uh, origins there but by uh taking um the wisdom uh you know the narrative structures from folk, folk epics he manages to sort of bring uh all that into his uh literary works um uh, and and therefore when janni was was singing you know one section from kusuma bale uh, it it to the listener it it appears like you know listening to one of the, one of the folk epics because the the narrative form actually comes uh from there right so if you look at uh, different editions of uh, uh, uh kusuma bale for example in some uh, editions actually it's organized more like uh, a folk epic um wherein lines are actually broken down based on the rhythm of of those folk forms um and and finally uh, the last point that i want to make in addition to the you know the the uh, the point about uh, 
a new literary language, um, rootedness in a community from which he derives all this, is his uh, approach towards uh, progressive traditions, uh, contemporary progressive traditions um, in the um, second half of the 20th century. Um, in, in, in some other work, um, I've been writing about uh, uh, the emergence of a progressive consensus in, in the 1950s and 1960s in uh, the Kannada speaking regions in Karnataka, which actually this progressive consensus actually stands on four pillars, uh, prominent primacy to Kannada language, um, decentralization of power, um, um, and then land reforms, um, very important. And then finally, um, an anti-caste uh, discourse, which also accommodates um, um, reservations, right, affirmative action. Um, so these four aspects um, actually gave direction to how social change should occur in Karnataka. And unlike you know, West Bengal or Kerala or other states of uh, India, um, if social change took a different form in, in Karnataka, it was on the basis of this progressive consensus. And this is an argument that I've been developing in, in certain other essays that I've, I've written in recent times. And so uh, Madeva actually you know, has a close affinity to this progressive consensus, which uh, emerges in the 50s and 60s. And, and uh, it, it gets implemented as part of state action in the 70s and 80s, um, both by governments uh, led by uh, you know, Congress chief ministers and and uh, Janta the chief ministers, uh, but um, and and this progressive consensus sort of breaks down by the 90s, which leads to the emergence of uh, of uh, radical right in in Karnataka as well. So that takes us into a different uh, uh, terrain. But but the point I wanted to make here is uh, this affinity to with progressive writers and ideologies and movements uh, was there. But he's always been eclectic and reconciliatory in his, in his approach, where the objective is always to find ways of recognizing the other, right? As a way of um, you know, uh, uh, coming up with self-conceptions. But uh, in, in, again, you know, I mean, I, I hate to do this, but, but in a Levinasian uh, uh, way of, of, of uh, recognizing the other and, and keeping ethics at the core of this. So uh, this is what makes him, in my mind, quite unique. I'll, in the interest of time, what I'm going to do is to just look at one example each from uh, Kusuma Bale and, and Wadalala, just to make, you know, uh, just, just to highlight uh, the points that I, I made. Uh, so if you look at the first uh, example, for, uh, for instance, right, the first uh, uh, um, excerpt, Sakavana Naku Kamba the Totti, Hatti Anodu, they have a booming libetto, Hanchu Kalu, Hanchu Hulu, Tengina Garia, Arare Musudi, Madi Kundu Nintitu. Sakava's four pillared courtyard, hut, right? That is the, uh, the, the, um, the agent of this, the, the subject of the sentence. Uh, had let its body into the earth and stood with a tile, say, coconut front face. Sakavana charmaku, mulegu, pandani ke tapitta darinda, maya charmagalu, swatantravagi, alladutta, tamashta ke taviddu. Since Sakava's skin wasn't in sync with her bones, the skins of her body remained by themselves, independently moving on their own volition. So, uh, I mean, you, you get a flavor of, of how language is, is, is being used in, uh, in instances like this to achieve a very different kind of uh, uh, you know, uh, effect. So uh, in translation, uh, it becomes very difficult to bring in uh, the impact of some of the word choices, uh, but I don't want to dwell much on, on the translation question. Uh, the second example that I want to read out from Kusuma Bale uh, is uh, uh, from uh, you know, uh, uh, an episode where um, uh, there's a brief conversation between a brother-in-law and a sister-in-law. Basappa Somyoro tamma tanu mana janava purana pustaka dolage netto talayatta da kuntavaru galuga kudi baralo talva yatta de Yaramatai Nino, 
ಅಪರಿಚಿತಳಾದ ನೀನು ಬರಲು ಕಾರಣವೇನು ಎಂದರು ಬಸಪ್ಪ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೈಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬುಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಪುರಾಣ ಅಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ಔಟ್ ರೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೆಡ್ ವೆನ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಕೇಮ್ ಅ ಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ಔಟ್ ರೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಯು ಮಾದರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ರೀಸನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಅ ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಂಜರ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ಡಸಂಟ್ ಕಮ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಇನ್ ದ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೌ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಯಲಾಗ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಪೈರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಬುಕ್ ದಟ್ ಬಸಪ್ಪ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಈಸ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ರೈಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಪುರಾಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ and and it's a performative you know text and in that quite often you see uh women being a or you know characters being addressed in this form aparisadada neenu baralu karana venu this is a standard dialogue that you might find in uh, in uh, a play so this this incorporation of such um 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 aspects and 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 craftsmanship is is what i was trying to get at was my first example um so um, i mean such you know examples uh, you you find them all over um and and again in the interest of time let me uh, conclude uh, by connecting what he's trying to do with with both dalit uh, literary project and the uh, dalit movement uh, and how that dalit movement is is being seen again i'll try and limit my remarks to how madeva himself is seen in this in this uh, context right so just a uh, brief uh, background if if you look at the beginnings of the literary culture in in canada um, it begins in the 1970s although you have some earlier writers um, from uh, early 20th mid 20th century itself um, in here you can think of uh, you know what emerges in the 1970s as coming out of a crisis in literary belief as your doctor of uh, um you know uh, says in in another context right how is a new uh, literary culture emerging it is emerging out of a crisis in literary belief and what is the crisis that uh, we see here uh, it's so for one you have a new generation of writers just like devnor madeva bringing in their experiences modes of writing vocabulary dialects and unfamiliar world views into the literary uh, mix they're also demanding that a new literary criteria you know to evaluate such uh, books uh, such such literary works be created right that's the demand and and this is the demand that you see across india for a new distinctive dalit aesthetics you see that in the uh, in the works of uh, om prakash valmiki for example in in hindi or sharan kumar limbade in the marathi context um so what is the general uh you know uh, uh way to understand this new emergence right here the insistence is that there should be a connection between life and art um and art and literature should become instruments for political projects political purpose um and and you know dr nagraj writing about this phase of the literature and the limitations that it has to try and overcome recognizes three features which are important uh in this uh regard right one is uh the first feature is um exploitation and pain become the only cultural memory that you need to uh you know explore in in your writing right uh, i mean this is something that you will find in marathi autobiographies or in you know kannada uh, poetry or 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 fiction and in in some ways um you know um uh, madeva escapes this this uh um, limitation by through his uh, um um craftsmanship in a, in a, in a way right so in not only is you know this seen as the on this cultural memory is seen as the only viable material for uh, literary expression um it also sort of holds hinduism as the um uh, agency responsible for all these uh, um um this 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 uh sort of um constrained cultural memory and then the second point is uh, a psycho political psychological political state alternating between anger and self pity right so 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 self pity these are the only two possibilities which are um seen um as as again um you know um necessary for uh, for literary expression and finally there's a faith in modernity or modern civilization as the only liberating possibility so these um 
become the sort of uh, uh, standard uh, ways in which literary uh, Dalit literature, Bandaya, rebellion literature uh, find expression. Um, and, and here is where Madeva through his rootedness becomes quite, uh, quite different. And that is again seen as a compromise on the part of uh, his compatriots actually in the Dalit movement. Uh, and so when they, uh, this is the last point that I'll make here, uh, when they sort of produce self critiques after about four or five decades of uh, Dalit Bandaya rebellion movement, uh, you have multiple themes which emerge as uh, part of this self critique. Um, you have uh, a, an effort to reconstruct Dalit struggle itself, the choices made by the Dalit movement and so on. Um, there are sociological efforts to provide insights about the status of uh, Dalit and what it means to be a Dalit and the idea of uh, the state of being a Dalit itself. And then you also have a limited effort to sort of explore comparatively the experience of Dalit struggle in, in, in different states. Um, but what marks all this uh, critique is a sense of despair, uh, a sense of vishada, as we might call in uh, Indian languages. And so one activist actually says, uh, our friends who were like fireballs in the early part of the struggle have lost their quality of burning coal and have now turned into a piece of lifeless charcoal. Right? So this becomes a kind of critique of the, uh, the experience of Dalit struggle, which was seen as pure and uh, uh, pristine um, and intense in the early part, and which is something that Dalit activists want to recover now. But on the other hand, um, um, this is also a despair over the splintering of Dalit movement or the, you know, uh, the compromises which are made by uh, Dalit activists who became part of the middle class and therefore uh, weren't as committed to the struggle to the movement as they were in the initial phase. So um, this uh, re-engagement um, is actually a quite really interesting phenomena of the last seven, eight years. You have several new anthologies which have come up in recent times and all of them uh, have tried to sort of look at um, the past experiences of the last three or three and a half, four decades uh, by way of um, looking at um, two possible failures. One is uh, what they identify as the failure of leadership and the other is a, 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 a loose ideological commitment to uh, the cause of Dalit struggle. So these two are again, um, you know, uh, interesting in the context of uh, Devnur Madeva because he is seen as the poster child in some ways for this failure, and uh, uh, and and his worldview, his approach to literary, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, literary traditions, literary culture itself, his uh, um, um, interest in in um, seeing the human in the other, all this is seen as suspect in a kind of, uh, in, 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 a, in, a, um, in a political scenario where it is necessary to be disciplined and, and you know, to the message to the, uh, and, and to be committed to um, organizing uh, Dalit Sangarsha Samiti and so on. So from all those perspectives, uh, quite often, you know, what we see as uh, probably the strengths of Devnur Madeva uh, from the perspective of uh, uh, Dalit movement have been, you know, uh, considered as uh, as weaknesses, as uh, limitations. So um, let me stop here, uh, so that we have some time for discussion. Um, and Madeva is here, and will be happy to respond to questions which might uh, come up. Thank you so so much, uh, Prithvi and Mahadeva both, and Jani also. This has been an extraordinary. Um, session with with all three of you. Um, Prithvi, I was really hoping to ask you to read that other part from Kusuma Bale that uh, where Akamahadevi appears as the dust on uh, uh, on on the feet. Uh, if you, I was hoping that you could you could just do that. I it'll become clear why. I'd like to go back to the. Vachana tradition, I have some questions for you, but I think also this question that you've opened up around um, the, the question of, you know, uh, the longer tradition that uh, Mahadeva is really connecting with. So let me read out that. So um, the first part I read out, Basapa Somi Oru Tamma Tanumana Dhana Va Purana Pustaka Dolage Nettu Talayatta Da Kuntavaru 
ಗಳುಗ ಕೂಡಿ ಬರಲು ತಲ್ವ ಎತ್ತದೆ ಯಾರಮ್ಮ ತಾಯಿ ನೀನು ಅಪರಿಚಿತಲಾದ ನೀನು ಬರಲು ಕಾರಣವೇನು ಎಂದರು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಉಸಿರಾಡದೆ ಬಿಯುತ್ತಿದ್ದ ಗಾಳಿಯಿಂದಾಗಿ ಅಕ್ಕ ಮಹಾದೇವ ಮಗ ಅವರು ಅಷ್ಟು ಮಾತಾಡಿದ್ದೇ ಪುಣ್ಯವು ಅನ್ಸಿ ನಾನು ಕನ್ನಿ ಭಾವೇನವರೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಪಾದದ ಧೂಳು ಅಂದಳು ಆ ಯಾವ ಒಂದು ಗೆರೆಯೂ ಏರು ಪಾರಾಗದ ಬಸಪ ಸ್ವಾಮಿಯವರ ದನಿಯು ಭಾವಯ್ಯ ಅನ್ನುವ ಆ ಒಂದು ವಾಕ್ಷ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಬೇರೆ ಏನಾರು ಇದ್ ಇದ್ದಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳು ಅಂದಿತು ಸೊ ದ ದ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ದೇ ದ ಏರ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಾಸ್ ಟೈಟ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಒನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಬ್ರೀದಿಂಗ್ ಸಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಮಚ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಾಸ್ ಫೇವರಬಲ್ ಟು ಹರ್ ಅಕ್ಮಾ ದೇವಿ ಅಕ್ಮಾ ದೇವಿ ಸೆಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಮೀ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಇನ್ ಲಾ ದ ಡಸ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫೀಟ್ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಈವನ್ ಅ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಲೈನ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ರೇಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಟರ್ ಬಸಪ್ಪ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಸ್ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಇಫ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವರ್ಡ್ ಅದರ್ ದನ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಇನ್ ಲಾ ಸೇ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ದಿ ಆಬ್ವಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ದ ದ ಲಿಂಕೇಜಸ್ ಟು uh akama devi from the 12th century is there I mean, one of the other reasons why i wanted uh, i i chose this passage to you know uh, for today's discussion was also because um you know i mean in, if you look at at the end right when when it's not basapa swami who is rejecting her right it's it's this voice it's done right? so I, i think those are the kinds of subtle uh you know nuances that i'm taken by often when i'm reading his uh, fiction i mean you had a question about this i mean also just to allow people to to take some time to to ask their own questions i think it's uh, uh, one is taking in so much of what what you've um what you've said and what you've read but um i'm sort of i wanted to ask you to read that for two reasons one i wanted to ask you about you know how you think about the question of uh, the vachana the tongue the word and bringing the world into being but this is of course what uh, mahadeva told us about as well he says i'm waiting upon language to happen in and through letter and word and he talks about language as skin right when he's talking about writing and and so one you know one really sort of broad question um is really about this um is is this question about language as anticipation as waiting but language also as terribly concrete and and i right. think what one is really struck by um especially in hearing um mahadeva himself speak today and recite but um as well janni and yourself um reciting and I'll, i'll i won't call it reading reciting um his his work is how much this is somebody who is a poet philosopher i mean that's what it seems to me is is what is taking place and i think that's what you're sort of gesturing to as well that there is a way in which you know there's a kind of condensation of the word image that is opening up an extraordinary sort of uh, not just tradition it's it's a, it's a kind of uh, millennial trace one wants to to call it right so the calling up and again here um and it'll just be a broad comment and then I'll stop but i'm very taken by the fact that um mahadeva begins with the temple without shelter mm-hmm. and ends in what he said to us with the buddha with the vachanakaras and with marx and asking us to partake of marx's blood as a form of sharing yeah. right and and jani's own uh, performance is also about shelter right mm-hmm. that in that space where they were together we found shelter so there's something really extraordinary it seems to me that's happening here about an imagination of sociality that is both archaic and remembered but it's being reconstituted through the work of mahadeva's own writing in a kind of radically altered a new way um I don't know that anybody can speak to their craft you know in uh, when one is making a comment like this but if either of you had some thoughts on this uh, it would be great to hear I have one other question and we'll wait for um questions from our uh, from our audience so I think many of them are just with you um and taking in what's what what you've all been uh, doing and saying So I think you you know you absolutely right um this is um i mean th- this is what i meant in you know in 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 the sense 
for the materiality of language, but also uh, kind of very concrete, very material. Uh, I mean, there, there's an act of imagination involved in in making, you know, a Kamadevi um, a contemporary to us, or in making other Vachanakaras contemporaries to us. Uh, bringing in Buddha, Marx, and into conversation, um, not in a in a in a sort of rigid ideological way uh, or or in a you know I mean this is a very different kind of hermeneutics wherein uh, you you try to combine um, in in what seems to me uh, you know using uh, the wisdom of the community as such right and this is the other thing that he was talking about in his response to my uh, question about literary sensibility where he said it's not about me as an individual author but as you know, part of that collective and, and expressing the uh, the uh, you know, wouldn't say sentiments, but the spirit of the of the community, so to speak, right? Through these narratives, through these ideas, and and most of these sort of parable-like um, prose essays that he writes are often to that effect, um, where you are gesturing, um, making gestures towards everyone in this. Um, um, in, in in this community, not along the along caste lines, but by recognizing the humanity of of each of the uh, um, you know um, participants in that community or or me each member of that community, and that comes through in his fiction uh, all the time. Yeah, I think that's a good question. Uh, so th there are two of them. Um, one is, uh, and, and I think they come from, from two different uh, aspects of this question of thinking with and through a, a, a kind of community knowledge or something that's available to the community. Prashant Tingole asks the question, the experiential sensibilities which comes through the metaphors that Devanura uses in his writings, such as sin, crime, bringing marks under the people's tree, P-E-O-P-E-L-E-S, tree are largely missing in the mainstream academia and the public. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know the possibilities to mainstreamize this vernacular theoretical knowledge production as an approach of decasting methodologies, which has remained subsumed under the canonized sort of theoretical framework. From the other end, a slightly more critical uh, question um, dealing with that same material is by Sutirtha Chakraborty, who asks, when Devanura talks about the collective consciousness, what role does he see there for memory? As we all know, memory can be deceptive or writers may choose to present a selective version of memory, ignoring certain parts. Can memory be trusted at all in constructing a collective consciousness? <laughs> uh, both, both, both interesting. Possibility at the perils, yeah. No, it's, it's, you know, I mean, I agree with the uh, point on memory, but uh, I mean, you know, we're all choosing to, especially in, in, in these kinds of political projects, we're not trying to be historicists or professional historians. It's, uh, I mean, especially for someone like Madeva, he would completely uh, reject that demand, right? He wouldn't accept it at all. Right. It's the burden of historians to remember everything that has happened, good or bad. But what I'd also like to recognize is the ability to see both, you know, as he concluded one of his uh, interventions, simplicity, wisdom, and cruelty. Right. So memory uh, need not simply mean uh, we choose what is um, um, flattering to us. And, and, and one really remarkable tradition in Kannada intellectual uh, circles, uh, you see this in D.R. Nagaraj's work, and you see in this in Mahadeva's work, both in, in sort of serious quasi-academic intellectual work or in you know, uh, uh, literary works or in you know, parable-like uh, um, essays. Um, you see this ability to um, simultaneously grasp beauty and cruelty and actually um, you know my my advisor my teacher Sheldon Pollock when he wrote a dedicatory line to uh, D.R. Nagaraj he mentioned that right 
to his recognizing his extraordinary ability to see beauty and cruelty in the same thing and and this is what um, sort of you know um, remains at the back of our uh, conscience um, sort of informing our consciousness collective individual um, uh, whatever it may be uh, this this important ability to see both cruelty and and beauty whether it comes from a historic historicist um, sense or whether it comes from a um, from a you know folk uh, consciousness it's present there it's the presence is something that we need to recognize and and i can you know read out a line in every page of madhava's fiction which would exemplify that right i mean quite often when i'm speaking on these kinds of themes uh, i've been accused of being a fanboy uh, but it's 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 something that we notice and and you know how do we theorize this without you know sort of paying attention to those kinds of details is is a, is a challenge but the first question um i think it's you know in in as i was saying earlier in our social movements um quite often it may not get recognized quite often it may not get as much significance as it should but it is present right the point about uh, uh, this kind of wisdom uh, which in academic discourse it might be missing um if we want to bring it in it is our challenge it is our responsibility it's not i mean madhava wouldn't see it as his burden i mean he wouldn't you know he left university life four decades ago and he doesn't he hasn't you know had much to do with it um so if a uh, university or academia wants to be part of this social movement it is uh, you know i mean it, it's up to us who are in the universities to make that gesture now we have another video um no i i i wanted i wondered if uh, we could come back to sort of where you ended um both uh, your own comments prithvi and then what you said just now um one is the sort of challenge to historicism right and and to think through then um what it means to to call up this tradition where uh you know the vachanakaras buddha and marx sit with each other uh in an imagination of e- equality right where uh, which is sort of generous inviting and open to all the temple without the without the roof right um so so in that regard i guess you know both uh, i think uh, mahadeva and and dear nagaraj uh this kind of extraordinary effort to think about gandhi and ambedkar together nagraj of course the argument there that he makes that each is profoundly transformed in the aftermath of the pune pact uh, compromise so to speak and and so on in in a way that was absolutely unexpected for those who were properly political uh, ambedkarites who had a particular reading of that moment but then i think also um a kind of reformist upper caste uh, you know uh, group or community that uh, felt in a sense that you know they could take on what gandhi had done because he was of course the most radical possibly the most radical upper caste uh, um, activist intellectual uh, practitioner as you will uh, so far as it came to this question of of untouchability um but you know this is a this is a very very critical uh, position to, to 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 take on and it's a very fraught position to take on and i wonder if you could say a little bit more to uh, what it would mean to bringing uh, those two perspectives together and it goes to your broader point that you know one wants to think about sort of cruelty and and uh, and beauty in some sense as as uh, coeval or co-constitutive but this is a very very difficult uh, hold to square or uh, peg to square or whatever the word may be right these two things don't they're really incommensurable it seems to me or they have become incommensurable so what is it that one finds in that possible uh, conversation and meeting or encounter that we should be thinking about again today 
No, that's, I mean, with GoFirst, you know, the last two or three days have been discussing quite a bit. Uh, I mean, this event has given an opportunity for us to re-engage with each other. And one of the concerns that we share um, is about a recent development in Karnataka, wherein, you know, each caste is getting a development corporation of its own, as if the uh, you know, state has no conception or the government cannot think about any notion of public good. Right, so that you need a caste corporation, caste development corporation, or you know, provide um, reservation to all groups, so that you basically split up all service, uh, state services in uh, you know along caste li cost lines, as many of those as, as you could, and and share public good along caste lines, right? And and we've been thinking about this. I mean, if this is the other extreme to which, or this is the other option that we're looking at, um, you go back to the, uh, you know, the, the, the great challenge that Ambedkar posed, right? What is our society? What, what is the Hindu society that we are envisaging if caste society is the uh, reality, right? And, and so what I, where I see um, you know, Madeva sort of breaking the discipline of Dalit movement, Right, Dalit movement in a sense, I didn't have much time to develop a couple of themes that I wanted to discuss there. If it has certain strategic objectives, uh, whether it is in the form of getting certain entitlements or creating a certain political space for itself, which will then enable the community to become uh, an interest group, uh, a political player in the, you know, in the game of politics, right? So one of the uh, criticisms that young Dalit activists have in the last 10, 15 years from the mid uh, aughts, let's say, is that the choices made by um, Dalit activists, senior Dalit activists like uh, Madeva himself, weren't uh, appropriate. They didn't uh, become, you know, a political party. They didn't make the kind of radical uh, uh, political choices which should have been made. Uh, wherein capturing political power was actually the goal. Right? So, um, so that uh, sort of uh, strategic, uh, partially Ambedkarite um, goal of whether it is securing a separate electorate or a part of state power. Right? So it, it achieves certain objectives. But I think uh, the question that Madeva is asking is perhaps a more ambitious version of the Bhajan Samaj question, right? It's not Bahujan Samaj, it is the Samaj question. So what is this Samaj that we are thinking about and how do we get there? And, and in my uh, understanding, in, in the way I read him, he's always been constantly thinking about overcoming contradictions, overcoming what we call in Indian languages as Vairudhya, right? You see these, these uh, uh, oppositions, um, 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 diets which, which emerge quite often, but how do we transcend them? How do we see certain um, uh, possibilities, even while being comfortable with with difference? And and this is, you know, perhaps I should end with on the, on this note. Um, in my uh, experience, right, Madeva is perhaps the most, um, you know, the, the writer or the thinker that I've seen most comfortable with difference. Difference doesn't face him, right? and when you have that. Uh, Kind of confidence about dealing with the other. Uh, so these strategic objectives that the Dalit movement had become very limited goals. So how do we transcend this to be, to build a larger society uh, or to come up with a conception of a samaj of a society? That becomes a broader question, a broader objective, and that is where I see him, you know, uh, becoming quite distinctive from others. And uh, which also lends into accusations of being uh, not disciplined enough, not strategic enough, um, of not being, uh, you know, in, in, in some ways parochial enough for to achieve the uh, goals of a moment. Um, just a continuation uh, as you were as you were talking, or be, if you wanted to add a little bit more, Shashi Kumar asks, and this is coming right to the point that you were making, in Karnataka, the Dalit movement, which was influenced by Dalit Panthers in Maharashtra, was preceded by Dalit literature. Interestingly, the Dalit movement pulled not just the Dalits, but a significant number of progressive Savarna writers, if I can say so, 
also toward the movement. So, you know, you are Anand Murthy and, and others. That's on the one hand. And on the other hand, there were too many ideological conflicts, Lohiite socialism and Gandhian socialism. I see only B. Krishnappa, the founding convener of DSS, as the only Ambedkarite within the movement in place. What role does that play in shaping Dalit literature and or the movement? What role does that play in the Karnataka cultural milieu? So, so that this is not, uh, yeah, yeah. This is a narrative arc that I wanted to address a little bit, uh, but I'll, I'll try to give a you know two minute version of it. Uh, so you have both Dalit literature and Dalit activism being coterminous because uh, literature itself becomes an act of assertion of uh, you know um, of expression expression of of a new uh, literary and, and political consciousness, and that is accompanied by um, activism in uh, um, all across Karnataka from the village level to the universities. And it leads to all kinds of conflicts and, and actually uh, that movement emerges out of those conflicts. So that's one part. And, and you know, for a variety of different reasons, it splinters, uh, the movement itself splinters. Um, you have, you know, a, a certain kind of uh, uh, commitment to conduct workshops or, you know, um, adult education uh, programs in the evening. Uh, and, and so on and so forth, which were quite endemic in the first 10 decades, first uh, one decade, uh, slowly sort of disappearing. But uh, the other point that Shashi is uh, uh, making is, is about the, uh, the, the alliance with uh, the Bandaya movement, right? And that comes about in a slightly different uh, uh, context, but there are certain overlapping concerns that both Dalit writers and Bandaya writers have, which have to do with uh, both their idea of uh, the purpose of literature itself, and then um, of the kind of uh, new aesthetic uh, um, criteria which needs to be, uh, which need to guide uh, the production of literature itself, and and also the evaluation of these literary works. The standard, you know, literary critical parameters are not seen as adequate or appropriate even. Right. So that's the sort of complexity. Um, but I'm I'm not so sure about. Um, you know, his reading of, uh, of other Dalit uh, activists, and that's a longer conversation um, that's left for another uh, occasion. Prithvi, um, we probably should, we've got a few few moments and we should probably bring things to a close. Um, difficult to think about how we can do that, but I would like to ask if uh, Mahadeva could have the last word. And if we can ask him um, about, I, I keep coming back to this, uh, to what you read from Kusuma Bale. Uh, and Mahadeva or Nivo Vachana Bagge Unchuro Hela Kagata. What is the place of Vachana? You know, I want him to, I, I'm very drawn to, to this imagination of the world of the Vachana being with us now. So Vachana, Vachana Bage Unchur Matar Tira, Nivo Prithvi, to translate Anuvada Maridrali, Vachana Antara, we do living presence Nimage. Eva Kuda Kamaha Devi Namjate Idale, our Bandu Namage, do Antra inspire Martale, our Bandu Namage, she knocks on our door and asks for things, makes a claim. So now we broad literary world nalli jana henge how are we living in this space vachanaddu mahatva yenu simply put nimag ad vachanad mahatva yenu kannada keli nange bala khushi aitu i am okay uh... ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯವಾಗಿ ಒಬ್ಬ ಪ್ರವಾದಿ ಉಳಿದವರೆಲ್ಲ ಅನುಯಾಯಿಗಳು ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯವಾಗಿ ಧಾರ್ಮಿಕ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಕ್ರಿಸ್ತ ಒಬ್ಬ ಪ್ರವಾದಿ ಉಳಿದವರೆಲ್ಲ ಅನುಯಾಯಿಗಳು ಮಹಮದ್ ಹಾಗೆ ಪೈಗಂಬರ್ ಕೂಡ ಹಾಗೆ ಬುದ್ಧ ಕೂಡ ಬುದ್ಧ ಕೂಡ ಮಹಾವೀರ ಕೂಡ ಮಾದ್ರ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾರು ಏನು ಜೀನ ಓಕೆ ಮಹಾವೀರ ಯಾರು ಜೈನ ಧರ್ಮದಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ಒಬ್ಬ ಪ್ರವಾಹಿ ಉಳಿದವರೆಲ್ಲ ಅನುಯಾಯಿಗಳು ಆದರೆ ವಚನ ಕಾಲದಲ್ಲಿ 
ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯವಾಗಿ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ಸ್ ಪರಸ್ಪರ ಸಮಾನ ರೋಣವರೆಲ್ಲ ಒಟ್ಟಿಗಿರ್ತಾರೆ ಅದೊಂದು ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನಿಂಗ್ ಅದು ಮತ್ತು ಅವರಲ್ಲಿ ಇಷ್ಟ ದೈವ ಅಂತಿದೆ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಬ್ಬರಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಇಷ್ಟ ದೈವ ಅವರ ದೇವರು ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞೆ ಅವರ ಕಾನ್ಸಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞೆ ಅವರ ದೇವರು ನತ್ತಿ ಮೇಲೆ ಇದೆ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞನಲ್ಲಿ ಇದೆ ಆ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞೆಗೆ ತಮ್ಮನ್ನು ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾರೆ ಆ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞೆಗೆ ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾರೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಬಹಳ ಮಹತ್ವದ ವಚನಕ್ಕಾಗಿ ಅವರ ಒದ್ದಾಟ ಇದೆಯೇ ಹೊರತು ಅವರ ಸಂಕಟ ಇದೆಯೇ ಹೊರತು ಆ ಇದಿಲ್ಲ ಉಸಿ ಸುಳ್ಳ ಸುಳ್ಳಳಕ ದೇವರು ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಸುಳ್ಳು ಹೇಳ್ಬಿಡ್ಬೋದು ಏನಂತ ಇದೊಂದು ತಪ್ಪು ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಕ್ಷಮಿಸಪ್ಪ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞೆಗೆ ಹೆಂಗೆ ಸುಳ್ಳು ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಆ ರೀತಿಯ ಒಂದು ಅಂತ ನಮ್ಮ ನಾಡಿಗೆ ಮತ್ತು ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ವಚನದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೀಳಂಗಲ್ಲದೆ ಹಯನು ಕರೆಯೋದು ಒಂದು ಒಂದು ಮಾತು ಬರುತ್ತೆ ನಾನು ಕೆಳಗಡೆ ಕುಡಿತಕೊಳ್ಳದೆ ಇದ್ರೆ ಕೀಳಾಗದೆ ಇದ್ರೆ ಹಸು ಹಾಲು ಕೊಡಲ್ಲ ಹಸು ಹಾಲು ಕೊಡಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ನನ್ನ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ನಾನು ಸಣ್ಣವನಾಗ ಅಲ್ಪ ಆಗೋದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಸಣ್ಣವನಾಗೋದ್ರಲ್ಲಿದೆ ಅನ್ನೋ ಒಂದು ಕನ್ನಡ ನಾವು ಅಂದ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅವರು ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ದಲಿತರನ್ನ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಅಥವಾ ಹೆಣ್ಣು ಗಂಡು ನಡುವೆ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಸಮಾನತೆಗೆ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅಂತ ಅಲ್ವೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅವರು ತನ್ನ ಉದ್ಧಾರಕ್ಕಾಗೇನೆ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಂದು ಕೆಲಸನೂ ಕೂಡ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅದಕ್ಕಾಗೇನೆ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಆ ಒಂದು ಇಂಟೆನ್ಸಿಟಿ ತೀವ್ರತೆ ಬಂದಿರೋದು ಅದಕ್ಕಾಗೇನೆ ಆ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಕಾರ ನಾನು ಕಂಡು ಇಟ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ಇದ್ವಿ ಈ ರೀತಿ ಈಗ ಮತ್ತು ಭಾರತದ ಕಾಂಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ನೋಡಿದಾಗ ವೈದಿಕ ಇದ್ದೇ ಇತ್ತು ಜೈನ ವ್ಯಾಪಾರಿಗಳ ಧರ್ಮ ಆಗೋಯ್ತು ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯರ ಧರ್ಮ ಆಗೋಯ್ತು ಯಾವುದು ಬುದ್ಧಿಸಮ್ ಹಿಂದೆ ಈಗ ದಲಿತರದಾಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಇರಲಿ ಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯ ಧರ್ಮ ಆಗೋಯ್ತು ಹೆಚ್ಚಿಗೆ ಪ್ರಾಮಿನೆಂಟ್ ದುಡಿಯೋ ವರ್ಗದ ಒಂದು ಧರ್ಮ ಹುಟ್ಟುವ ಚಾನ್ಸ್ ಇತ್ತು ಅದು ಜಾತಿ ಯಾರಿಗೆ ಇದ್ರ ಅದು ಇಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಇತ್ತು ವಚನ ಕಾರಣಕ್ಕೆ ನಾನು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ವಚನಕಾರರು ಅಂತಾನೆ ಬಳಸ್ತೀನಿ ಲಿಂಗಾಯತ ಲಿಂಗಾಯತ ಅಂತ ಬಳಸ್ ಬಳಸ್ಬೋದು ಆದರೆ ಧರ್ಮ ಆಗಿಲ್ಲ ಒಂದು ಕಡೆ ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ನಾನು ಲಿಂಗಾಯತ ಧರ್ಮ ಆದರೆ ಮಹೋನ್ನತ ಧರ್ಮ ಜಾತಿ ಆದರೆ ಕೆಟ್ಟ ಜಾತಿ ನೀಚ ಜಾತಿ ಇದು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಭಾರತದಲ್ಲಿರುವ ಒಂದು ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿ ನನಗೊಂದು ಮಾತು ನೆನಪಾಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಈ ಟೈಮ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂಬೇಡ್ಕರ್ ನೂರು ವರ್ಷದ ಕಡೆ ನಿಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಇದ್ದಾಗ ಆ ಐದು ವರ್ಷ ಕಾಲ ಅದು ಯುರೋಪ್ ಮತ್ತು ಯು ಎಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕಾಲದಷ್ಟು ಕಾಲದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಅನ್ಟಚಬಲ್ಟಿನ ನೆನ್ಪು ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿಲ್ಲ ಅನುಭವಿಸ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಇದು ನಮ್ಮ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಆಗಿದೆ ಭಾರತದಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂದರೆ ವ್ಯತ್ಯಾಸ ಏನು ಅಂತಂದರೆ ನಾವು ಅದೇನು ಯಾವ ಕಡೆ ಮತ್ತು ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಕಡೆ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಈ ಅನ್ಸ್ ಈ ಅವರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯ ಯಾರು ಆದರೆ ಭಾರತದಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಅವನು ಎಲ್ಲೇ ಹೋಗಲಿ ಅದು ಅವನಿಗೂ ಸಮಸ್ಯೆ ಬೇರೆಯವ್ರಿಗೂ ಸಮಸ್ಯೆ ಅಂತೇಳಿ ಹಿಂಗಿದೆ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಇವಾಗ ಸೊ ಇದನ್ನ ಓವರ್ಕ್ ಮಾಡೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಮತ್ತು ನೀವು ಹೇಳಿದ್ರಿ ಗಾಂಧಿ ಅಂಬೇಡ್ಕರ್ ಎರಡನ್ನು ಕೂಡಿಸೋಬ್ಬಳಿಗೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ನೀವು ಕನ್ನಡದ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ನನಗೂ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗ್ತಿತ್ತು ಉತ್ತರ ಕೊಡ್ತಿದ್ದೆ ನಾನು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಇರಲಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಹಾಂ ಏನಂತಂದರೆ ಗಾಂಧಿ ಸನಾತನಿಯಾಗಿ ಕೊನ ಕೊನೆಗೆ ಮಹಾನ್ ಕ್ರಾಂತಿಕಾರಿ ಆಗ್ತಾನೆ ಇಂಟರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಸ್ಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾರೇಜ್ ಮಾ ಅಲ್ಲದೆ ನಾ ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಮಾಡಲ್ಲ ಮೊದಲು ಚಾತುರ್ಭವನ ಹೋಗ್ತಿರ್ತಾರೆ ಜಾತಿ ಹೋಗ್ತಿರ್ತಾರೆ ಕೊನ ಕೊನೆಗೆ ಎರಾಡಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ಯಾಸ್ಟ್ ಎರಾಡಿಕೆ ಚಾತುರ್ವರ್ಣ ಇಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಹೊರಟು ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ ಮತ್ತು ಗಾಂಧಿ ಪ್ರತಿ ಹೆಜ್ಜೆನೂ ಕೂಡ ನಡೆ ನಡಿಗೆ ಅದು ಇವತ್ತಿದ್ದ ಗಾಂಧಿ ಇವತ್ತು ರಾತ್ರಿ ಇದ್ದ ಗಾಂಧಿ ಬೆಳಗ್ಗೆ ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು
ಆ ಕಾಲದ ಗಾಂಧಿನ ಅಪೋಸ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಎಷ್ಟು ಗಾಂಧಿ ಎಷ್ಟು ಎಷ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಗಾಂಧಿಗಳು ಸಿಕ್ಕಪಟ್ಟೆ ಗಾಂಧಿ ಹೇಳಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಅವನು ಪ್ರತಿ ಜನವೂ ಜನ್ಮ ಈ ರೀತಿ ನೋಡಿದಾಗ ಬೇರೆ ರೀತಿ ಕಾಣ್ತೀವಿ ಸಾರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪ್ಪ ಅವ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅಂಬೇಡ್ಕರ್ ಹೇಟ್ ಲೋ ಹೇಟ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಸ್ಟ್ ಅವೆಲ್ಲ ನಿಜವೇ ಬಟ್ ಆದ್ರೆ ನಮಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಗಾಯ ನಾವು ಐಡಿಯಾಲಜಿಕಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಜಗಳ ಆಡ್ತಿದ್ದು ಬಹಳ ಸರಳವಾಗಿ ಜಗಳ ಆಡ್ತಿದ್ದು ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಐಡಿಯಾಲಜಿಕಲ್ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನನ್ಗೆ ಈಗಲೂ ಏನು ಗೊತ್ತಾಗಲ್ಲ ಸುಮ್ಮನೆ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಸಮ್ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಲೋ ಯಾ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಇತ್ಯಾದಿಗಳು ಜಗಳ ಆಡ್ತಿದ್ದು ಆವಾಗ ಆದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಗಾಯ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ಉಂಡ್ ಅದು ಒಂದು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ಅದು ನಮ್ಮನ್ನ ಒಟ್ಟಿಗಿರಿಸ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ಅದು ನಮ್ಮನ್ನ ಮಾತಾಡಿಸ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು so a quick summary uh three points um this response to the vachana tradition madeva talked about how in other traditions you have one teacher one enlightened one whether it is uh jesus christ or mohammed paigambar or buddha or mahavira and then others are followers uh but he sees vachanakaras or the vachana community as a vachana tradition as one in which uh you have um equals and and that's his reading of uh, of of the vachana tradition and there you know all of them have the conception of a personal god with whom they struggle right and and that person god is a form of shiva in 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 one way but it is also um embodiment of of their consciousness right so it is their with their consciousness pragne uh that they are uh, constantly um engaging so you see their uh, you know um struggles their their um, um fights with with to realize uh this uh god um to and and, and to their own um, consciousness they cannot lie that was uh, what uh, uh, he wanted to say in relation to um vachanakara sen continue continued on to talk about Gandhi and Ambedkar and, and his point primarily was about the many Gandhis who exist and the uh, and, and and Gandhi's uh, you know radical changes within Gandhi's own uh, beliefs right um, of Gandhi who has stronger conviction or stronger commitment to a cast to maintaining caste order to somebody who moves towards a radical position of uh, of uh, endorsing and attending only in the caste marriages um, and 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 so on um so those are the two major points and and finally about the dalit movement itself he recognized the ideological differences which existed between with his fellow travelers like the krishna pants so on uh, but what united them was this wound that they all shared uh, which brought them together to um, launch collective struggles thank you um prithvi thank you uh to devendra mahadeva thank you to janni um i think this has been an extraordinary conversation and i think uh, given that you know the previous session was about the dalit panthers it's very interesting to also think about the the relationship between um really sort of you know one aspect of the conversation uh, there with you know we could say with ambedkar and marx as it took shape in the 70s and here i think as many of the questions have have opened up and what you've been saying prithvi as well the kind of unresolved conversation between gandhi and ambedkar which keeps coming up whether with uh, whether it's with nagraj's work uh, and his writing or with what mahadeva was say, saying even today that you know you don't just think about you know you don't fix gandhi at a particular moment there are so many gandhis and what one wants to see is you know where does gandhi go where does he walk in the context of of, of a life and uh, and so i think it's it's opening up some some extraordinary questions but uh, most of all i would like to thank all of you and i think what we get from the engagement with mahadeva today rare um and we're just so grateful for it is indeed this question of the of the poet philosopher and every bit of you know his writing what you presented 
brings that out and that makes it very, very difficult because what you're getting is a kind of kernel that uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of a shock. You have to stay with it and really think through what it's asking you to, uh, how it's asking you to transform yourself. Right, that that question that you know one is waiting for language, that language is skin, uh, that we are together under this open sky, the temple without shelter. Um, it's sort of just a kind of remarkable world that he opens up in his writing, and I think it's very difficult always to ask somebody to to speak to what they did. <laughs> maybe they, uh, and I don't know how he would speak about his craft, but I think that's maybe the next set of conversations to come. Um, and again, with you, Prithvi is, uh, I think, a really significant guide. But I want to thank you all very much again. Uh, Mahadev, a great, great pleasure. Nivo, <laughs> last time now, Nimman Kelly, do University of Chicago, Nali, Nivo, Iowa, Nala, Idaga, Nivansali, University of Chicago, Bandu, present Maridri. Avaga, Nimman Kelly, do, Adad Melinda, Unsali, Nim Jate Mata, did in Bengalur Nali. But Amelinda uh, Murne Sati, Namuk Tumba rare opportunity to hear you and uh, to have you present your work to so many people who should know about you. Uh, so Namuk Tumbane, Tumbane, you know, pleasurable event. Thank you so much. So there is a, uh, I mean, Madeva has a website called Namma Banawasi. Uh, mm. uh, all uh, in a M M A B A N A B A S I Namma Banavasi, uh, where all his work is archived, uh, including yes. his interviews. We can uh, we'll put it up on the when we do when we uh, put up the video we'll put this up as well, uh, so that we can link to the to the writings. Okay. Thank you, thank you very very much. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks everyone for being with us uh, throughout these five last five sessions and. Uh, more to come uh, in the next few months uh, from uh, all of us at the Ambedkar Initiative and ICLS. Thank you again for joining us.